26, 2013. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would the city clerk please take roll? Joyce J. Here. Joe DeMott. Here. Davis Reinhardt. Here. Tracy Langworthy. Here. Bud Starker. Present. George Pond. Present. Christy Davis. Here. Mike Stites. Here. Uh, thank you. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of August 12, 2013? So moved. Second. Please pull the council. Motion carries 8 0. Uh, thank you. The first item we have under proclamations and ceremonies is the Police Department Citizen Award for Melissa Romero. So that's the Chief and Melissa to please step forward to the podium. Thank you. Uh, our next award, I'd like to call up uh, Patrick Goff and Heather Geyer, Nathan Mosley, and Doug Farman, the finance director of the city of Littleton. And this is going to be a budget presentation award, budget award presentation. Hi, I'm Doug Farman, Finance Director for the City of Littleton, and I'm a former Budget and Fiscal Committee member of the Government Finance Officers Association for the United States and Canada. And I am honored to be here today on behalf of Government Finance Officers to present the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award to the City of Wee Ridge. 
The Distinguished Budget Presentation Award has been promoting the preparation of high quality budget documents since 1984. The purpose of the program is to encourage and assist governments to prepare excellent budget documents for the benefits of citizens and other parties with a vital interest in governmental finances. During the 29 years the program has operated, it has gained the widespread recognition as the premier indicator of excellence in governmental budget reporting. To earn the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award, the City of Weaverage had to substantially conform to the program's demanding criteria. Such a record reflects the professionalism and commitment of numerous individuals as well as many hours of hard work. It also reflects a high degree of dedication and leadership. This is the first time the City of Wheat Ridge has won the award, and this is for the fiscal period beginning January 1st, 2013. The Government Finance Officers Association hopes that this award to the City of Wheat Ridge will serve as an example and encourage others to strive for the same high standards in their own budget documents. Therefore, it is my privilege on behalf of the GFOA to present the City of Wheat Ridge this Distinguished Budget Presentation Award. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate you coming out um, this evening to present the award to us. I, we're um, very honored to accept this um, GFOA award. Um, this is the only national award program for for budgeting, and uh, this was the first year we we applied for the award. And uh, this reflects a significant achievement by our governing body and staff to meet the highest principles of government budgeting. Budgeting. I'd like to thank um, Heather Geyer and uh, Nathan Mosley and, and Karen Van Ert, who couldn't be here this evening, who uh, help us every year um, on. Um, completing the budget, and um, especially this last year, to uh, be recognized for this award. So thank you very much. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is uh, our citizens' right to speak. Citizens who wish may speak on any item that's not on the agenda for a maximum of three minutes. Uh, please step forward to the podium and spell your last name for the record for any item that's not on the agenda. Seeing none, we'll move on to approval of the agenda. It's my understanding we're adding items two and three, resolution 29-2013 to item number two, and item three, which is resolution 30-2013. Does anybody have a problem adding those two items to the agenda? If not, they'll be added by unanimous consent. And we'll move on to public hearings and ordinances on second reading. Item one is council bill number 12-2013. I'm gonna open the public hearing, Mr. Starker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm pleased to introduce item number one. This is Council Bill number 12-2013, an ordinance submitting a ballot question to the voters of the city at the November 5, 2013 election concerning an increase in the sales and use tax rate <coughs> at issue in this matter. The City Council directed staff to move forward with a ballot question requesting a 1% increase to the city sales and use tax rate. To include this question on the 2013 ballots, the City Council must set the final ballot language and submit to the Jefferson County Clerk and Recorder by September 6th. Setting the ballot language by ordinance requires a first reading on August 12th and a second reading and public hearing on August 26th to meet the deadline. This ordinance, if passed, allows the citizens of our city the opportunity to express their opinion on this tax question by voting in the next general election. Would the city clerk please assign an ordinance number? This is ordinance number 1542. 1542? 1542. Thank you. We'll move on to staff presentation beyond the executive summary. Uh, we have none. Thank you. Okay. Move on to public comment. Please step forward for item number one. Uh, please spell your last name for the record and state your city or your address. My name is Tom Radigan, R-A-D-I-G-A-N. And I'm a resident of Wheat Ridge. 
I'd like to comment on the sales tax increase. I think a 33% sales tax increase to 4% uh, by the management of Wheat Ridge is shameful mismanagement. Uh, establishing the highest sales tax rate in the area will punish the senior citizens most, more than any other group. Seniors spend a higher percentage of their disposable income in Wheat Ridge and will pay most of the sales tax increase. I read the article in the newspaper and it mentioned that the, the general fund, I'm not gonna mention that number because I think I have the number incorrect in my memo, but we do have an additional reserve. The city has an additional reserve. And in the past, the city has had an, a reserve fund exceeding $10 million. Even with the recent economic downturn, and the more than $4 million loss generated from the 44th and Wadsworth redevelopment project, the reserve fund should still have at least $6 million in it and be more than adequate to cover the city's multi-million dollar unfunded liability from the redevelopment that comes due in 2014. A 4% sales increase will encourage well-known brand retailers to relocate outside of Wheat Ridge. Several recent development sites uh, current development sites such as Cabela's and Jolly Rancher, 38th and Wadsworth, 44th and Wadsworth, can only succeed if they are able to attract these well-known re retailers. And, and I have to question whether the highest sales tax rate in the area will help the city keep existing retailers such as Apple Jacks and Wheat Ridge Cycling. If you care about seniors, if you care about economic redevelopment in Wheat Ridge, if you care about a vibrant city, you will vote against a 1% tax increase. I recommend you consider a one-third percent sales tax increase. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Council. My name is Jesse Hill, H-I-L-L, -L, live over at 2995 Chase Street. Uh, tonight's discussion on placing a $6.5 million tax increase on the ballot, um, it's not really a vote for if you guys are for it or against it. It's really a more of a vote on what you have proposed. Is this worthy of the citizens to vote on? Will they be able to make an informed and educated vote upcoming? And I obviously see this as no. We have no plan with this, no budget, no timeline and no accountability. I recommend that you table this until you get the simple requirements done. The respect, uh, you'll learn the respect of the voters if you do this, trust me. If you fail to table this, I offer you three necessary amendments. One, that the tax increase only be spent on the items listed in your language. Remove the but not limited to. It should be focused on what you truly are proposing because otherwise it's all up and out there. Number two, sunset this tax. Give the next council, say, six years to prove that this is a worthy investment into the community. We, if they approve, they'll continue it on and we'll be able to continue to invest in our community out here. Number three, uh, please provide some transparency so that any citizens can watch and make sure that every cent spent is accountable and open to the public without special requests. And we're talking about opening the checkbook on this and we can do this. If you fail to offer any of those amendments, I could understand. I guess I would at least like to, uh, uh, more of a public explanation to the answer uh, a few questions I've had for you this council. I guess, one, why is there no plan on where this money will be spent? Why is there no budget on how much will be spent and where and how much for roads or how much for other items you've listed it out? I guess I also like, why would you not want to sunset this? You know, what, what were the thoughts going into that? And also, I, at last, will this actually solve Wheat Ridge's financial problems? If you, do you truly believe that? So, Council, I ho look forward to uh, hearing some of these answers tonight. Uh, it's an important time to do it, and most of all, the citizens of Wheat Ridge, I really believe, deserve the answers too. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anybody else here to speak at item number one? I was seeing them we'll move on to council questions and comments. Ms. Jane. 
Um, <clears throat> as it is written, I will not be voting in favor of this um, council bill. I feel as though there has not been enough information available to the public about it. More, I am concerned that the amount, 4%, is does put us too high into the range. I, I, we, have, we have discussed that we have, have a, a grocery store economy, therefore that amount will be coming, uh, as was pointed out, seniors will be paying more. But when I look at what I'm more concerned about the fact, well, I'm not, shouldn't say more, but Lakewood has a 3% range, Golden has 3%, Arvada 3.46, Edgewater 3.5. I do not think that bodes us well to have a 4% range, uh, a lone city, when we are trying so hard at this time to create economic development. And, and where that, of course, fits is the fact that uh, if it hampers businesses from coming in here because we have a 4% sales tax, uh, I don't think that's in our, in our best interest because we are trying so hard to change that. I, would be more inclined to suggest a smaller amount um, because when I read as to the need, which is strong, the need is absolutely strong. I wish the public could hear more of that, which they do need to hear, meaning the, the, the road situation, the, uh, the equipment situation, it is very strong need. But I'm thinking that more uh, a logical to me um, tax uh, sales tax increase would be in the three and a half to 3.75, something a little bit lower uh, that I think is more palatable. And there's something else, too, is we're not remembering or we're, we're forgetting that the Jefferson County Schools will be looking at 99 million, or billion, is it? Million bond issue in this ballot this year. So um, that, that, that doesn't bode well for us either. That's all. Any other comments? Ms. Davis? Um, so thank you for your comments and you know looking at the language i'm you know when the question of but not limited to the following i i have no problems uh marking that off because i do think that the that this the, the monies raised would go to the road and bi uh, bridge construction uh, maintenance capital maintenance and also uh, capital projects that support the business growth of our community and um it, it is a little higher um, it is, you know, one thing that we looked at as a council when we met at our retreat, you know, we discussed different ways to, to raise revenues and, and one of those uh, ways was also through property tax. And again, we felt that this was the, the most, in, in the essence of equality, uh, way to spread the tax to go to all members of our community and members who, you know, come come into our community to shop and, and, and that type of thing. We're not limiting it to just the, you know, putting it into um, a mortgage owner or situation and mill levies there. So we did feel that the tax was um, the best way to equally share the burden of some of the, the needs of our city. I will say I was um, born and raised here, so I'm 46, almost 47. And, and I do feel that the city, we have been very cautious in some of our development and some of our spending in roads. And quite frankly, it shows in our city. It shows um, the, the streets, the sidewalks, there's wear and tear in our city that when you go down the street, things are a little better kept. And, and I don't want to look at Wheat Ridge like that. Uh, I grew up in a Wheat Ridge that wasn't like that. And, um, I do feel, you know, we can say, well, some of these neighboring cities um, have a different tax increase, but if you look at some of the major developments in these major cities, Belmar, um, the Target up on Kipling, look at your uh, receipt because they do add an additional development fee. So it does take it over what uh, sales tax were, were requesting. I, I meant to go to the Walmart Lakeside, but I didn't get a chance to go there today, but I don't know if there is some additional fee for development there. So I think as a city, what we're trying to do is support some of the small businesses, give them some um, tax, you know, new businesses coming in, 
we're, we're trying to share, we're, we're trying to build new business, we're trying to, w when they're developing some of these old buildings and putting a lot of their money in, we are trying to incentivize these businesses to build a community and um, it's working, it, it's working well. We've, we've got some great businesses off the ground and, and I think that these mo this money has helped support that and so I will continue to support this um, tax. I, I mean, I think we're kind of splitting hairs on three quarters or one percent, but I do agree. I mean, I'm okay with being transparent and taken off, but limit, not limited to the following. I'm okay with that. And every city council meeting we do sit here and, and people who watch or is happy to ask me, um, we do let them know what kind of incentives we give to some, some of the new businesses coming in. So I do think it's supporting the vision of Wheat Ridge. Um, I think it's time to go a little bit above status quo because status quo is is not where we need to be right now. Unfortunately, we've we've we're a little behind in, in development and that type of thing. So I will be supporting this. Any other comments or questions, Mr. Stites? Yeah, I haven't quite frankly supported this tax increase from the word go. Uh, I didn't like it. I think it, uh, as far as being a, a wheat rich businessman, uh, I think it's going to hurt business. I think uh, we're right really getting to a good point in this city where we're starting to get some new businesses in. Um, I think it'll affect them and I think it's going to really drastically affect some of the older businesses. Um, so I have not supported it and I don't like the language in it. When we passed that, what was it, Jerry? 2004. 2004, <coughs> the 1% that we did, we tied it to hiring 10 new policemen, which we needed, uh, parks, maintenance, uh, and there was some very good that has come out of that. Um, so the way this is written, you know, initially I think I was gonna vote to put it on the ballot, but I don't think I will. Uh, because I don't think enough information is out there. And then too, as far as the city goes, we have not cut our budget, quite frankly. I think that uh, we need to go into our budget and take a look at it and see the areas that we need to cut. Uh, we need to get, I think, down to the bare bones on some of this stuff and then possibly show the people why we need a sales tax increase. But when we can't even cut our own budget, uh, then I think that's wrong. Thank you. Any other comments? Mr. Pont? Just a, a procedural question, I guess. I mean, it, it, it appears as though per this, uh, this document, of course, that we've really, uh, tonight's the, the night. So I'm assuming that amendments made on this if they're if they're small, it would be something that we could move forward with. But if they're if they affect the uh, some of the math or anything else in here, that it uh, that we have some sort of uh, time constraint. Well, I can I can answer that. Uh, it's an ordinance on second reading, so any amendments proper. Part of the ordinance is in fact the ballot question, so you can adjust that uh, language. Uh, if you were to change the rate, um, we could probably, you know, take a short recess and see what that would do to the uh, $6.5 million number, which is an estimate and normally a high estimate. Um, but, you know, there's no reason, in my opinion, you couldn't do whatever amendments you need to do tonight. If, if we need to do a little recalculating, the only one to, that would be affected that you'd need to spend any time at all thinking that would be the $6.5 million number, which is, again, an estimate. It's usually generously high to, to make certain that it covers whatever the rate. The, the, that's not an exact number, and so it wouldn't really result in a lot of math that we'd have to undertake. So really, any amendment, I think you can, you can process on the dais. So we're still in the public hearing. Any more comments or questions before I close the public hearing and take a motion? Close the public hearing and a motion's in order. No, I'm not. Well, no, we have to take a motion first. I move to approve Council Bill number 12-2013, an ordinance submitting a ballot question to the voters of the city 
at November 5, 2013 election concerning an increase in the sales and use tax rate on second reading and that it take effect immediately upon adoption. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion to approve as stated in the packet. It was seconded by Mr. Reinhardt. Now we could take amendments. The, um, I amend this, um, I move to amend the, um, the ordinance to read the ballot question requesting a 3.5 increase to the city use sales and use tax. Uh, everything else would be the same, and of course the monetary. Oh, you want to say a, half, half a percent, percent, half a percent, not 3.5 percent. Right, I'm sorry, half a percent. Uh, the 3.5 is obviously what I was thinking of. Uh, requesting a half percent increase to the city sales and use tax. So a second on amending the, you'll have to amend two things. You'll have to amend the percentage and also the dollar amount. So you're cutting it in half, so it's going to be 3.2, 3.25 million basically. So is there a second for that amendment? Is there a second? Motion fails for lack of a second. Any other amendments? Um, I, I would like to move to amend the language in the ballot question to remove but not limited to the following. Second. Do we have a motion to remove some wording? Mr. Dodd, do you see where that's at? Yes. It was seconded by Mr. Reinhardt. Discussion on the amendment? Mr. Uh, DeMott? You know, I guess I should have brought this up before, but you know, this isn't something that we have taken lightly. Uh, it's not something that uh, we just came up with last week. This is something that for the last four years has been, you know, and probably longer than that. I've been here four years. Um, I've heard discussions of uh, road fees, stormwater utilities, um, and and I think we've addressed these, and in my opinion, and we've found that they are disastrous to business owners. Um, I own a business in Wheat Ridge, I own a business in Lakewood, and I own a business in, in Arvada. And I can tell you that people are not running away from buying pizza in Arvada because the sales tax is higher. Uh, I will tell you that there is a stormwater utility and there is a road fee in Arvada and that costs money every single month. No matter how much, how busy you are, no matter how many pizzas we sell, there it is right there on that property tax bill every single month. Um, in Wheat Ridge, we don't have that. And we, I mean, I, uh, and a lot of people I talk to enjoy that we don't have that. Uh, you know, we're also the lowest property tax, I think in the whole county. Um, I mean, by a, a good amount. Um, and we've kept it low, I believe. You know, I, I, it's never come up in the four years I've been here, but I know that there's been a, an older population in Wheat Ridge since Wheat Ridge was Wheat Ridge. And there was a reason that that was low, and that's mainly the reason, is to keep that to, to make it livable for seniors, but attractive for business at the same time. Um, I think there's a balance that you have to attain. And, you know, on these points, as far as, you know, taking out this language um, and, and keeping it for the points that we've made, we've seen tax increases before in, in, in every aspect, sale, state, uh, property tax, sales tax, city sales tax, and I know that if I say we're going to give this much more to the police, all that's going to do is displace from another part of the budget, and, and each one is going to grow. It's an across-the-board tax increase really makes it the fairest tax increase there is. Um, you know, as far as sunsetting it, you know, it's really, you know, two years from now, the next council could put it on there to lower it. The next council could also put a stormwater utility or a fee on there that will not go to the voters. That vote will be taken right here on this dais, and 
citizens very, have very little to say about it. I think putting a sales tax increase on the ballot is by far the most fair way to ask for a tax increase. Um, that's the most open and transparent way to do it. And, it, you know, a, I do it maybe selfishly. I'm a property owner in several of those cities, and I'd like to see those utilities and fees stay away. So I, uh, I won't support this amendment, I will support the uh, original question. Any other comments on the amendment? So we're striking the language but not limited to? Can I? Um, I just wanted to ask, who was the second on Mr. that one? Mr. Reinhardt? Thank you. Ms. Davis? Um, based off of Joey's discussion, I'm also fine with leave, leaving the but not limited to the following, so can I <laughs> well, It's already been seconded, so you have to okay. vote against it. Okay, I'll vote against my own motion. <laughs> All right, please pull the council on the main motion, on, on the amendment. On the amendment? On the amendment, we have to. <laughs> the amendment fails four to three with Five, five, four four, yeah, four, yeah. five. five to three. Five to three. Five to three. I'm sorry. With council members DeMott, Stites, Langworthy, Davis, and Starker voting no. Okay, so we have the main motion and with no amendments that Mr. Starker wrote. Any other amendments? <coughs> Please pull the council on the main motion as not amended. Can you wait just a minute till I get this thing? Yeah. Don't vote yet. Con J. Riley. Now you can vote. <laughs> Voting on the main motion. Main motion as not amended. Motion carries six to two with council members Stites and Jay voting no. Thank you. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is decisions, resolutions, and motions. Item number two is resolution 29-2013, Mr. Pond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Resolution 20-2013 authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute an intergovernmental agreement by and between the County of Jefferson, State of Colorado, and the City of Wheat Ridge, Colorado regarding the administration of their respective duties concerning the conduct of the coordinated election to be held on November 5th, 2013. Is the motion in order? Motion's in order. <coughs> I move to approve resolution 29-2013 authorizing an intergovernmental agreement with the County of Jefferson regarding the administration of the respective duties concerning the conduct of the coordinated election to be held on November <laughs> 5th, 2013. Second. We have a motion to approve item number two, seconded by Mr. DeMott. Please poll the council. Is that correct? Can you re-clear, re-vote, please? I cleared it. Mr. Stites? Motion carries 8-0. Thank you. Item 3 is Resolution 30-2013. Mr. Pond? Thank you. Resolution 30-2013 uh, uh, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute an internet intergovernmental agreement by and between the County of Jefferson State of Colorado and the City of Wheat Ridge, Colorado regarding the production of a mailed notice concerning ballot issues. So motion order? Motion's in order. I move to approve re resolution 30, 2013, authorizing an intergovernmental agreement with the County of Jefferson regarding the administration of the respective duties regarding the production of a mailed notice concerning ballot issues. Second. We have a motion for approval. Item number three was seconded by Mr. Starker. Discussion on the main motion? Please poll the council. Motion carries 8-0. Thank you. I believe that concludes our agenda for this evening. We'll move on to city manager's matters. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I don't have anything this evening. Thank you. City attorney's matters? Uh, council, just as a report, you direct me to conduct an investigation at your last meeting. 
And as you know, that's uh, taking place right now, and I'm have being assisted in that. Um, I'm hoping to have that investigation conducted or completed promptly, and it's my goal to get you the results of that before your next meeting, business meeting on September 9th. And I won't give you a specific date yet because I don't have it, and the investigation is complete. But I appreciate your giving me the additional time, and you're you're providing your time as as you're called to be interviewed. Those of you that are. That's the only report I have, and hopefully uh, you'll get more from me soon. Thanks. Thank you. City clerks matters. <coughs> um, I have one item that I wanted to just tell the public about. Um, many of you may not know that we have a mailing list, uh, an email list, and a actually hard copy snail mail list, if you will, um, for people who um, want to get um, – minutes of the council meetings and notes from the study sessions either emailed to them or mailed to them as a hard copy and if there's anybody out there that wants to be on that list just call the city clerk's office um, give us your email address that list is only used for that thing it it doesn't go anywhere else so if you would like to get minutes from the city council meetings and notes from the study sessions. Let the clerk's office know and we will add your name to that list. Um, there are a f There is a very small list. There's a few folks out there that don't have computers and they want to have the things mailed to them and we do that as a courtesy. I think there's maybe eight people, it's not much, but we have that service available. And um, then I just wanted to um, report to everyone <clears throat> the deadline for nomination petitions for the upcoming municipal election was at 5 o'clock this evening. And um, right now we have uh, candidates in, in every, uh, for every office that's up. Um, for the uh, mayor, um, candidates Joyce Jay and Mike Stites have had their petitions are sufficient. Um, candidate proposed candidate Park Worthington is um, there was a problem with um, the the form of his petition and he has three days to cure that so we'll see what that brings um, district one has four candidates that are um, good to go as they say their petitions are sufficient Th those candidates are Davis Reinhardt Jerry DiTulio Monica Duran and Karen Thaler District 2 has two candidates at, as well. Um, they both brought their petitions in today. Um, we checked them out, and they each have our short two valid signatures, so they have some days to cure that, both candidates. So that's, I'm sure they were minor things about addresses that n won't be any problem fixing, so I'm sure they will be the candidates. And in District 3, Dick Matthews and Tim Fitzgerald are the candidates. Likewise, their um, petitions are were sufficient and they are good to go. Um, in District 4, um, Joseph DeMott and Genevieve Wooden are the candidates. And um, Mr. DeMott had a problem with <laughs> people who signed his petition who don't live in District 4. So he has a, 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 a very small handful of signatures to 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 fix by Thursday noon, so um, I'm sure you'll be, <laughs> be able to handle that. Um, and that's all. If there are any um, of the candidates out there and here to this Thursday evening at seven o'clock, it'll be here in council chambers. We have the lot drawing um, where we will actually draw names out of a hat to or a bowl or something appropriate um, to find out the order on the ballot um, we have that's by our city laws that we we don't incumbents don't come first and it's not alphabetical it's it's uh, the order on the ballot is established by lot drawing so we'll take care of that and there will also be some um, information about the financial forms that have to be filled out and filled out and some kind of 
you know, do's and don'ts of campaigning and things to watch for and campaign practices and things like that. So um, those of you sitting up here who are running again, be sure to come Thursday night. And if there are candidates out in TV land, they are reminded to, we, we send them official notice, but I wanted to just, the more times you tell people, the more likely they are to remember. So that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Stites. Oh yeah. Uh, great festival this year. Uh, well, congratulate my congratulations go to the festival committee because that's a lot of work and it is pulled off good. Uh, it would be a great time to relocate your home or office to uh, Root Ridge. If you need any help, see one of us. Your staff would be happy to do it. Positive thing, uh, with school starting, please uh, watch out for the kids, the traffic. Um, you'd hate to have anything happen. And as always, please try to find it and buy it in Wheaties. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Starker. Uh, nothing tonight, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Langworthy? Yes, just a small um, something. Uh, Kurt Gilmore, who has been a very um, active proponent of Wheat Ridge and many other charities, um, lost a battle to cancer. And so they, our thoughts are with him. Um, they have not scheduled a memorial service at this time, but our, our prayers are with Jane Ann and, and the family. Ms. Davis? Uh, just a couple things. Um, I'm sorry to hear about Mr. Gilmore. I actually grew up with his kids, uh, Laura and Anne, so I'm sorry to, and, and their younger sister. So uh, sorry to hear about that. Um, I do want to send a shout out because Melrose Manor had their seventh annual block party this year, and it was a hit as usual. I think our crowd was bigger than ever. Probably had over 120 people at our block party, and um, the police were there, not because we were too noisy, but because they were uh, supporting the community. And I want to thank the police department for, for uh, uh, being there. And also the fire department was there. And uh, that was a huge hit because they brought the big trucks and the ladder trucks. And oh my gosh, it was a huge hit. And uh, so I also want to thank the councilmen and women who uh, came to the, the event. Uh, other than myself, there were... Uh, four other folks there, so I appreciate you attending, and I know our community appreciates your attendance too. But um, I can tell you, and I encourage other neighborhoods to have these block parties because it really—it's um, amazing how to you know to create a community and and have a community get along so well. And uh, you know we're our own police dogs and ADT and and all of the above. You know we send out email chains. We're thinking about doing a website, so. Um, if anybody needs any help on setting one up, I'm happy to, to at least give you some advice from our block party, but a shout out to, to, the, to the folks that came and, and thank you for that. The other thing in mind is that uh, one of the things as we discussed today that as a citizen, um, we'll probably be pulling together citizens of Wheat Ridge to, um, to work on some of the, the sales tax and the education to the public. Um, so one of the things that we have to do as council, if, if any of us, and we'll be meeting as citizens, but if at any time two or more of us or more than two of us meet, we uh, have to post that on the website. So, um, one, if you're interested in being a part of that, um, as a citizen, all I'm gonna, probably going to be a part of that and we'll have to register an entity and that type of thing. But I uh, just want to let you guys know if there's anything and more than uh, two council folks will be there, we we will post it as well. But again, we'll be there as citizens and not as uh, council folks. Ms. J? Nothing tonight. Mr. Bond? <clears throat> not much. I actually just want to reiterate what Mr. Stites said about the uh, festival. I had a great... Um, Great time down there with the family, and it looks like a lot of hard work was put in. So appreciate appreciate that, um, and the kids appreciated that. So we had a great time, and um, you know, I just want to make a comment. The last couple of weeks, we've had we've had I, I think good good uh, attendance here with people coming in and commenting uh, during public comment. Um, 
And although we have some hard decisions to make, I think it's great when we when we get the participation. So I just want to thank everyone for for uh, showing up and participating. Uh, Mr. Reinhardt, uh, I don't have much tonight, but uh, I also uh, um, knew Kurt Gilmore and sent my thoughts out to him. And, and sort of in a similar note, I hope we all have some thoughts for Commissioner, former Commissioner McCaskey, who's who's also struggling with cancer at this time and uh, um, needs needs some good thoughts. So. Mr. DeMott. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> um, yeah, another awesome Carnation Festival. Um, I've watched that um, festival from the window of the restaurant for years and years, and I knew it was a big deal, but this was my first year as a board member, and uh, I'll tell you, it's uh, quite a grueling task that they put on there. Um, there was a few dozen committee people that uh, really kind of pull together and and get that whole thing rolling and it is quite a feat to see happen um, and on that note next year we do have some committee members that are have been doing it for decades um, and uh, we don't get a whole lot of new volunteers and new committee people um, it's a once a month meeting and uh, if anyone's uh, looking to see how things work from the inside and uh, have some time to volunteer on Tuesday evenings once a month. Um, we would definitely welcome some new uh, committee members and board members. Um, and we, of course, welcome new ideas all the time. Um, I apologize, I don't have any numbers or anything to get you, but the carnationfestival.com has a contact link, or of course you can call somebody from the city, they can get you in touch with somebody. Um, but I just want to thank all the fellow board members, committee members, <coughs> volunteers, um, organizations, the Rotary, the Optimists, Sweet Ridge High School. Uh, I mean, I could go on and on, but it was, it was as big as ever and, and uh, hope we make it bigger for its 45th and, and so on years. Thank you. Thank you. We'll adjourn for, take a five minute break. We'll come back for the study session up here. So let's come back about uh, five or 10 till.
on the agenda? Do we have anybody here from the public to speak on an item on the agenda? I guess seeing none, we'll move on to uh, any changes to the agenda. Item one is the tax incentive request for taste of home cooking. Mr. Goff, before we yep, start. Great. Yep, thanks. Um, we have Steve Art here. We'll let him um, uh, go over the uh, proposal. Thank you very much, members of council. Uh, first off, just want to thank you very much for all you're doing to help promote business within the city of Wheat Ridge. Tonight, we come before you with the first item, which would be a, um, an enhanced sales tax incentive program, which we call the SDEP program. For a new business that's opening on Kipling and 41st, it's called a Taste of Home Cooking. It's actually two businesses that are set up. There's two LLCs there, a Taste of Home Cooking, which will be handling the food operations, and Wine Not, W-I-N-E. Uh, why not, which will handle the alcohol sales, but together they're really one business owned by the same person. So for this, the sake of tonight's purpose, we will reference them both as um, a taste of home cooking. Um, they purchased this property at 4111 and 4101 41st. Those of you who have been in town a while probably remember that as the Paws Inn and the Mercedes restaurant. The Paws Inn closed sometime in, I believe it was like 2008, um, according to our sales tax records. And Mercedes restaurant uh, had a fire in it prior to my starting here sometime in 2011 to cease the operations. Um, the Taste of Home Cooking that is owned by uh, uh, Robert Rotella uh, purchased the building. It's about 10,000 square feet. He started remodels of that. Uh, he will be having his grand opening, from what I understand, on September the 6th. He did approach the city about uh, uh, what sort of incentives we had, and, and council encouraged them to uh, encourage us to go visit him about uh, the STEP program. It'll be 10,000 square foot restaurant. It'll employ 30 staff members upon opening. It will have a full service bar. The restaurant will be open seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m and then on weekends until 10 p.m. Uh, the advantage to having this business, and it is a niche type business that we're trying to bring in our community, more opportunities for our citizens to not only shop in the community, but also to have a fine meal within the community. And if you had not visited his restaurant in Arvada previously, I think you would uh, agree that it, it is marvelous food that he cooks there. Um, he has invested, the owner has invested approximately $600,000 of his own funds into the, uh, the redo of this restaurant. He has got sign off on it, so he is, as I said, ready to open his doors there. Um, the project will also revitalize a blighted area of town. That end of Kipling, as you approach I-70, has some dilapidated buildings in there. Um, and so it is probably something that will bring new life to that area, provide those citizens in town an opportunity to uh, have a, a nice new meal in town. So, you know, we have one at, at 29th now that open. Now we have this end of town, so we're starting to encompass the entire town. Um, working with the business, uh, we have deemed that uh, the public improvements would probably equal about $76,000 um, that the we've identified. Um, what we would like to do is to offer them a, a five-year SDEP program, which would rebate back their enhanced sales tax at 50% of the enhanced sales tax for a period of five years with a maximum not to uh, exceed $73,694. We may round that off to 73.7. That would be my report. And Mr. Goff, if you have any other uh, thing to add, with that, we'd be happy to answer questions. Questions? Ms. Uh, Langworthy? Just a quick technical one. Under the terms, because this still has to come back to council. Correct. Okay. Under the terms, it has um, the first, shall commence on the first day of the calendar month following the month in which the owner receives their certificate of occupancy. Have they already received their certificate of occupancy? Yes, they have. Should we, I mean, can this stand or should we make an adjustment? Because there, there's no way this is going to be approved by September 1st. You are correct, and we can certainly amend that to the night of the council meeting or very close to that. Okay. So that'd be not a problem. I, I didn't know if that mattered or not, other than normally they're done in advance, but I want to make sure that that language didn't mm -hmm. trip up somewhere. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Starker? Thank you, Mr. Art. I had a couple of questions. We have two of these that we're considering tonight. <coughs> and we've considered others in the past, and some of the variable elements in the ESTIP program appear to be the percentage, uh, you know, 25, 50, or 100 percent, and, and the time period. Uh, in this one, it's five years, and I believe in the next one, it's three years. And I was just wondering, uh, what, what sort of were the determinations that you used, and in, in how does that come about? The city manager and I evaluated it um, based upon investment into the project. 
that we felt that, that the private investment of this larger restaurant probably deemed that they could they could use more of that funding back. Well, and we also heard from council that you you know you'd like some I think more um, st stringent not sure if that's the right word but um, criteria on on some of these factors. Um, so we've internally um, discussed that we should set um, the initial uh, share back at 50 percent. Um, and then council can have um, the discretion to change that if they would like. Um, and then the years can vary, um, again, depending on how much sales tax um, the business uh, is proposed to generate um, and how much the public improvements um, are for that project also. And I had one follow-up. And I notice on the next one we have a recommendation for participation in the building and the business development zone, the BDZ, and I didn't see that in this, and I wondered whether there was any I was directed to offer the SDEP. Um, if council so desires, we certainly could approach the business about a business development zone rebate. I'm not sure at this point what they uh, what they paid in the use tax, but if that is council's wish, we certainly could. And if they would like, we could probably bring it back. Well, another determination, I think, too, on that was that the um, the taste home cooking was um, pretty well. Um, into the process of, of completing their construction. Um, the green herb was still um, just pulled permit not too long ago and we're just starting their construction. So the BDZ is, is a, a rebate of, of the building use tax. So we kind of use that as a termination too since um, the green herb, or not the green herb, but taste home cooking, cooking was kind of a, an ask after the fact. Um, and BDZ also is related to employment more than the SDEP. I mean, they're, they're both proposed to increased employment in the city, but I think the employment of the, uh, the green herb place is, is a higher level um, salary. I'm not sure. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Stites. Just a quick question. How much were the building permit fees? Let's see. Well, for this whole taste of home cooking, I, I didn't calculate the building permit fees because we were not doing a business development zone program for this. it's in the memo, Steve, isn't it? Didn't they stick it in there? Say it in there. I don't think so. Once again, because we weren't proposing a, a business development zone. It was on that spreadsheet. You didn't put it on this. Use tax paid. The green herb paid. Um, Thirteen thousand five hundred in use tax. The I did not taste of home cooking. Yeah, we, we have a I spreadsheet here with all the costs, but for some reason that didn't get entered. Um, we can find that number for you if you'd like quickly. No, that's right. Not okay. Tonight, but you know, it would be just kind of nice to know what other investments they have. Mr. Reinhardt, I just um, just sort of uh, as we look at these programs, I have no objection to either of these particular things, but I, w I would like to comment that from my standpoint, um, the these sorts of incentives ought to be evaluated customarily before programs put into place. I mean, the, the, um, the logic behind the program is that we're incentivizing um, things. Now, we seem to have a program that we understand Got need a little help to get over the line, but as a as a broad rule, I would I would I would see a preference to to getting these applications before projects are started. So you know we're seeing that we're actually making a difference in that go no go decision of the of the applicants. So I think that, from my experience, is sort of the more customary way to look at them. Mr. Dumont, <coughs> um, <coughs> this really isn't in one of our target redevelopment areas like 38th or Wadsworth or something. Um, and on on that note, we really don't have an organization like Wheat Ridge 2020 working off of that, off of that corridor. Um, so a lot of the business owners down by me and down on Kipling, and um, they're not aware of these programs. And if, you know, you walk up to a regular guy who works at a restaurant like me and goes, hey, and you say, hey, want an S-tip? They go, whoa, <laughs> hey. <laughs> you know, so that's kind of what happened, you know, actually that guy probably said it exactly like that, but, uh, you know, so it's kind of, it's kind of just a foreign concept and, um, 
so I want to thank Steve for reaching out to him again because I know he had asked and and you know um, he, they came he actually his contractor came to me about some bathroom thing I don't know what happened there but anyway um, I asked him and he asked about it and and I said well I don't know so we asked and and that's why it was a little bit late it is you know they're trying to get open they've delayed their opening by a couple of months now just for cost reasons or whatever reason um, but they um, have you know gutted that building you know um, so on the on the money no I know the BDZ you know it is I I feel pretty late for that you know to get into that especially you know the building departments probably been paid and done so it's not, we're not really worried about that um, the 50 percent for five years is comparable to what we gave um, Colorado plus um, on one of our main corridors and you know some of the other ones we've given kind of off the main corridors are more in the 33 percent range I think if I remember right for like three years percent percent oh okay for three or something so um, you know I think uh, businesses appreciate um, anything you know so uh, you know I think since they we for forego on the BDZ and the use tax um, rebate you know I would definitely um, you know hope that they hit the numbers that they're looking for and the 50 percent over five years is you know maybe a bit high you know I, I would say it'd be neat if we could do a 33 for five years a third of it for five years I'm not gonna try and do that calculation because I don't even have my phone or nothing with me but um, I guess we could figure that out um, just because it's not on one of our main redevelopment corridors and stuff well and actually Kipling is is the corridor is identified in the comprehensive plan in our economic development plans as a as a corridor yeah we don't have active yeah um, um, support for it as much but I have to say that in my mind Kipling is a place we should be thinking of and we well it think. needs it there's a lot I know I mean I, I don't mean, have any go by this building it's it looks great yeah, you know I, I, I don't have any <laughs> problem just, in us they did a great job as well I think it needs it does anybody have a problem with this moving forward to the regular meeting Both of them, or did we did we oh. settle both? Well, that was uh, item we one. We haven't talked about the green herb yet. So, uh, one, item one is done. We'll move on to item two, the green herb. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, so, the green herb is a business that it will approach the city prior to the beginning of their construction for a business development zone loan, uh, a rebate, as well as an SDEP. Um, to give you a little background on the green herb, they are an existing Wheat Ridge business. They lease a site on I-70 Fronter, Frontage Road. Um, they have been looking in town to relocate to build a new site for a couple of years since I began here. They actually previously located a site right at w Ward Road and 44th Avenue. Um, due to some site constraints there, really a big billboard that would have been in the middle of their facility, they decided not to build on that site, and they s continued their look. Um, in 2011, uh, they found the site on uh, Kipling in late 2012. They actually purchased the site. It's a real kind of an odd lot because it's got a very small frontage and very long in the back. It's got a 100-foot um, wide frontage, and it's 450 feet deep. So it really limits the development that have gone on there. We have many realtors that have been marketing that program out there, that site out there, and have not had any bites from it. The only previous bite we had on that site was a mini storage. Um, the neighbors along there really object to that, and the Planning Commission denied that application. Um, this came along. It's a retail facility. It's a service facility. It's an employer of 20, 16 jobs now. They anticipate to go to 20, 22 employees upon the finish of the construction. Um, the, upon completion of it, the property value will increase dramatically, which will a aid the city in that. Um, it's a very valuable business. It has been in business for quite a few years, so it's, it's not a, a, a risk at any chance for them to come in here. And with that, staff would recommend, uh, as the staff report says, that we uh, assist with a an S-step in there, which would be a 50% S-step for three years. We're basing the S-step upon, as the code is written, that it is upon what the property that they have purchased is currently generating, which is zero. So we will start at a zero base and 
uh, rebate back 50% of that for a period of three years with no cap because um, we, th- we think it's a business that can really take off. For those people that are listening to this on television or the internet right now, the Green Herb sells medicinal. It is not a marijuana facility. It is not a marijuana facility. They sign, they do vitamin supplements, chiropractic services out of the offices. We'd also recommend, because they did make the request for 100% rebate of their building use taxes, which is approximately 13500 that has been paid to the city already. With that, we'd be happy to uh, answer any questions, Council. No, no question. Just to comment that uh, I think this is great because I, I, I was on the planning commission when we saw some of these other ideas come forward. I know this is a challenging site, and it's fantastic to see that they're uh, committed to the staying in Wheat Ridge and building on this site. So I absolutely support this. Ms. Davis? Um, I'm glad you clarified that on the green herb because my next thing was going to say I am a customer of the green herb, so (laughs) I don't want people to make things up. (laughs) Um, But I I just had a couple questions. So what you're doing is you're saying the sale, the you're you're starting the sales tax with a a base of zero. So you're not using any of their current sales tax because they are in the Wheat Ridge um, market. And again, I'm not I'm not squashing this, but they. They are, uh, you know, on Ward Road, so, uh, and we're still using a zero base with that? You're absolutely correct because the code is written that it is the amount of sales tax that is produced on the site. However, the the city attorney did, we had the city attorney look at that, and he said you really have three options. You could, the codes doesn't specifically um, speak to this. So you could use their, their base at their other site. You could start at zero, or you could look at like, like a happy medium I think, or something to find a base. So um, we, we went ahead and recommended. It is a pretty low increment. They, I think we're projecting $5,000 a year is what their, their sales yeah. tax increment would be above zero. And, and I guess uh, they do chiropractic there. Yes. Are they going to continue to do that at this new site? They will. Oh, yeah, th- he's moving over and actually expanding their services. But I don't believe there's any sales tax on the chiropractic service. So No, I was just curious service-wise, you know, for the TV land. Um, and then I just kind of had a thought. So when um, so it's 100% of the building use tax. Um, with that in mind, help refresh my memory as far as is there any – with the building use tax, that's just basically a tax that it's not that we have folks coming out and inspe- inspecting and that type of thing. It's just a tax. Correct. Just the use tax, which is base. It's 60% of the total value of the project times our tax rate of 3%. Okay. Um, but then there's also building permit fees, review fees that they still paid that pay for our staff time, and, and we're not re- proposing to rebate those, just the use tax. And then uh, one last question. I don't know that this is just a question or curiosity because I think a lot of the stuff they do they mail correct is that they do a lot of mailing yes so that would be a non-taxed unless of course I live in Wheat Ridge and you mail it to me but if I mail it to Alabama or something correct Correct. okay (coughs) just some questions anybody have a problem with this one moving forward to a regular meeting just a heads up too we are w- working with the city attorney on both of our both of these codes both the BDZ and the SDEP code to look at some um, language changes proposed language changes and maybe put some more um, distinct specific criteria in it based on th- um, some of the examples we we've, we've had in the past so we'll br- be bringing that forward to you soon to maybe deal even with this issue of, of, of business moves within the city you know that you do start at zero or what so there, there's a few things that we would recommend changes so Hey, we're adjourned.